I am Ranjita, and I'm going to present our research on malicious plugins in WordPress marketplaces. Now, this work was done um, with all of my colleagues at Georgia Tech at the Sci-Fi Lab, advised by Professor Brendan Salter for Maggio. All right. Everyone has a website nowadays. Even my grandmother in India has a website. Now, how does my grandma have a website? This is because she relies on content management systems, or CMSs. CMSs are an amalgam of layered software and interpreters that abstract away the low-level systems from the website developer. The CMS itself can be thought of as CMS core and CMS plugins that contains the code templates that allow someone such as my grandma to drag and drop and build a full-fledged website. But where does my grandma get all of her plugins from? She gets it from the marketplaces. There are unpaid marketplaces as well as paid marketplaces. Uh, some of the popular unpaid marketplaces are WordPress plugins, WordPress themes, and also surprisingly, GitHub. Uh, the paid marketplaces, the popular ones for WordPress are ThemeForest, Code Canyon, WPMU Dev, and Easy Digital Downloads. Now, these paid marketplaces for WordPress alone form a multi-million dollar economy. The plugins that are sold here cost anywhere between two to a little over $1,000, with an average of $63 per plugin. Um, these plugins are downloaded anywhere between five times to 260 million times, with an average of 939,000 uh, download count. Now, the code on sold on uh, all of these marketplaces, the plugin code is mostly unvetted. Also, the plugins on my grandma's website, they have limitless access to all of the layers of the, these websites. What could possibly go wrong? Um, so the, as part of the current industry standard, the website owners rely on weak assumptions, such as the plugin popularity or reviews and ratings before installing plugins on their website. Some of the cautious website owners could rely on security plugins or vulnerability databases um, before getting any plugin on their website. However, our research found that these weak indicators are insufficient and that the attackers are literally selling malicious plugins to unsuspecting victims. In fact, we had the unique opportunity to collaborate with CodeGuard who is one of the largest website backup service providers on the market. This gave us access to the nightly backup snapshots of over 400,000 websites, spanning eight years between July 2012 and July 2020. And we found over a million dollars worth website plugins that were either infected, pirated, or outright malicious. To study the source and impact of malicious plugins at scale, we developed Yoda. Yoda takes the web server file system as input. It first identifies the plugins, and then identifies how many of these plugins are malicious, followed by identifying the origin of these malicious plugins, to finally reveal the impact metrics or the damage done because of these malicious plugins. Yoda scans the web server file system to first identify the plugins on the web server. To do this, uh, Yoda uses the plugin header. Now, the plugin header contains the plugin name, um, the plugin URL, the author details, description, etc. It also looks for the referenced files as well as the APIs used by a group of files before grouping them as a plugin. Now, it's important to note that CMSs loads the plugin via the plugin header, so attacker plugins must also have headers. As part of Yoda's malicious, now Yoda, Yoda then proceeds to identify malicious plugins. Now this can be challenging. Um, this is because we found that attackers distribute malicious code across different files. So inter-file interaction is a challenge. Also, each of these behaviors have multiple code implementations, so rule-based detection directly cannot work. So how does Yoda detect these malicious behaviors? For each of the plugin files, Yoda first generates the AST or the abstract syntax tree. It then merges the individual ASTs by resolving the dependencies and generates a dependency resolved AST. So this addresses the inter-file interaction challenge. 
Yoda then identifies the suspicious sinks on all of these uh, dependency resolved ASTs and performs backward slicing um, starting from the suspicious sinks. So these are some of the data flow models for the malicious, data flow models for the malicious behaviors that Yoda identifies. So column one shows all of the malicious behaviors. Now, for example, let me just explain one of the behaviors. So let's consider SSO backdoor, which is a single sign-on backdoor. Um, here, Yoda looks for this particular data flow where an attacker creates a new user, changes the permissions to provide admin privileges for this user, then registers the user with the CMS and redirects all of the requests to this new user's admin URL. So whenever Yoda finds this data flow, then it flags the plugin as malicious with an SSO backdoor behavior. So the additional details for all of the other models are in the paper. Um, and this is how Yoda finds malicious plugins. Now, we, ne the next question that we want to look at is, what are the sources of malicious plugins? These malicious plugins could either come from legitimate plugin marketplaces. This is where attackers can upload malicious plugins on legitimate marketplaces, either by buying the code blaze of popular plugins or by directly uploading malicious plugins for sale. Malicious plugins could also be injected. This is where attackers inject fake plugins that are not sold on any marketplace by exploiting web server or plugin vulnerabilities. Malicious plugins could also be infected plugins. Attackers use pre-existing malicious plugins to then laterally infect other plugins on the web server. Or another case uh, of malicious plugins is that they can come from nulled marketplaces. These are pirated marketplaces that distribute paid plugins for free with the only caveat that these are secretly packed with malicious code. Now, our collaboration with CodeGuard gave us access to our data set. CodeGuard maintains the nightly backup snapshots of their clients' websites. Uh, when we developed Yoda, you, CodeGuard gave us access to these nightly backups of their websites, um, which was about 400,000 websites spanning eight years. We ran Yoda on um, these websites, and here are the results of Yoda's malicious behavior distribution. So Yoda was deployed on over 400,000 websites, and it found over 47,000 malicious plugin instances across about 25,000 websites. We know that code obfuscation and web shell malicious behavior has been used in plugins since 2012. Now, as these CMSs introduced newer features, such as the single sign-on, uh, these also started getting used in malicious behaviors. So new features such as single sign-on backdoor was introduced in malicious plugins since May 2019, and it was introduced as a feature only in late 2018. Now let's look at the economic drivers of malicious plugins. About 70% of the plugins that came from legitimate marketplace, I mean, about 70% of the malicious plugins that came from legitimate marketplaces, um, these were found in five of the seven most popular marketplaces. So GitHub and Easy Digital Downloads did not have any malicious plugins directly distributed on their marketplace. The website owners in our data set spent a little over $41,000 to buy malicious plugins from legitimate marketplaces. Recall that null plugins impersonate plugins from legitimate marketplaces. So the website owners from our data set alone contributed to $228,000 in explicit losses to plugin authors. We expected null plugins to impersonate and distribute only the paid plugins. Surprisingly, we found that they impersonated unpaid plugins from unpaid marketplaces as well. The website owners in our data set spent a total of $834,000 on plugins, only to later find them compromised after being installed on their websites. Um, now we dive deeper into some of the malicious behaviors found in the plugins that were distributed directly via legitimate marketplaces. So we note that none of the plugins that were sold on legitimate marketplaces had any obfuscation techniques. Despite being sold on legitimate marketplaces, these attackers are hiding in plain sight. 
In fact, we found instances of well-commented malicious code in over 2,000 plugins that had spam injection behavior. So we can say that the attackers rightly assume that an average website owner will not inspect the plugin code before installing it on their web server. Here are some of the findings from the null marketplaces. So column one shows uh, the popular null marketplaces that the website owners in our data set use to download pirated plugins. Vestathemes.com was the most popular null marketplace with uh, website owners from over 2,000 websites installed over 3,000 plugins in our data set. Now, we found that not all of the plugins that were distributed on null marketplaces were malicious, but majority of them were. About 97% of all plugins that came from null marketplaces in our data set were found to be malicious. These null plugins have been around since 2013, but the malicious activity on these null plugins began only since late 2015. We also found that the average cost that a website owner is saving by installing these plugins is about $59, because the legitimate counterparts of these pirated plugins is, the average cost is about $59. So they're not pirating the $1,000 plugins, but they're just getting the regular $59 plugins. The Black Hat SEO campaign on these uh, plugins sold on null marketplaces accelerated in 2019. This is where attackers introduce malicious plugins on these null or pirated marketplaces. The victim downloads these plugins and the Black Hat SEO campaign is activated, which then redirects more victims into their marketplace. So the Google search, if you, if you look for um, the Google search for any popular WordPress plugin or theme free download almost always ends up with some null marketplace in the top five results. In fact, here's a screenshot of a plugin named Duplay for WordPress, which was priced at $80. And the highlighted four of the five search results lead to a null or a pirated marketplace. So despite public alerts about the rogue Black Hat SEO malware campaign in February 2019, the attackers have successfully maintained their ranks on the search engine results. Finally, we wanted to answer the question if these malicious plugins that are installed on the websites and our data set, are they really cleaned up? Yoda found about 25,000 websites that were infected with malicious plugins. 10.8% of these websites attempted to clean up these malicious plugins. However, 12.5% of these websites found that these plugins were re reinfected despite the cleanup. Shockingly, at the end of our study in July 2021, 94.6% of the websites with these malicious plugins were still infected. In, conclu in conclusion, we presented Yoda, an automated framework to identify malicious plugins and their origin. Yoda identified over 47,000 malicious plugin instances across 25,000 websites. And Yoda found over a million dollars worth plugins that were infected, pirated, or outright malicious. Thank you. Open for questions.